Hello, this is Mark from tradeinform.com and welcome to this video explaining how you can program the entry and exit conditions for a trading strategy using Excel. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate with a simple classic trading strategy. I'm going to use the exponential moving average as a filter and if the price is above the EMA, I'm going to use the stochastic and when that turns up, I'm going to enter long. If the price is below the EMA and the stochastic turns down, I'm going to enter short. So I'm going to demonstrate using the Excel spreadsheet that is on the screen at the moment. And what I've got here on the left in yellow is the price data. And here in green and this reddish color are the long, the formulas for the long and short trades. Now this is actually a trade informed backtest model, which you can use to test all sorts of different trading strategies. There is a link on the screen if you'd like more information about these. And what I'm going to use this spreadsheet to do is demonstrate how we can use Excel formulas, normal Excel formulas to program our strategy. Now we've got the price data here. This is the S&P 500. And in this blue area here, I'm just going to put in my stochastic oscillator formulas. Now if you haven't programmed the stochastic before, it's probably easier than you might think. I'm going to use a 14 period stochastic. The first thing we do is we find out the most recent high and the most recent low. Now the stochastic formula is as easy as you like. It is basically calculated by the current price or closing price minus the recent low, stick that in a bracket and we simply divide that by the recent high minus the recent low. So we have the stochastic, to put it into the usual format I'm going to multiply that by 100 and there we have our raw stochastic. Now the way we usually see this is slowed I'm just going to use a simple average to slow it once by three periods and another one of those to get my signal line. And copy that down. And it really is as simple as that. I'm going to put some labels on here so we know where we are. We've got here percent %K and we've got here percent %D. Right. Okay, so next thing we want is an EMA, an exponential moving average. So before we can calculate any exponential moving average, we always need a starting point. And I've just used a simple average, simple moving average to get that starting point. Let's put in the EMA formula, which again, you might find easier than you were imagining which is the current price minus the previous price multiplied by our EMA factor, which I'll come to in a moment. Press F4 to make that an absolute reference cell. Stick some more brackets on and add it to the previous average. Okay, so I quickly, I missed out a step here. This is the exponential moving average multiplier and you can see the formula there. It's basically 2 divided by the number of periods plus 1. Nice and simple. Okay, so we have two commonly used technical indicators programmed in to our spreadsheet in about two minutes. Okay, so now we have to think about how we enter the trade and for this we need to use logic. And the way we use logic in Excel and in other forms of programming is we use an if statement shown up here in the formula bar. Okay, so our trading long criteria. When do we enter a long trade? Well, 
I've already got the format that I'm going to use here, which is equals if and, and I'm using and because I'm going to have multiple conditions. And then I'm going to use comma, and then I just use the word long to indicate a long trade. Simple as that. Now, if I've left one of these conditionals in, and if I highlight it, we can see what it's doing. It's actually checking this cell here, and that is basically checking to see whether or not there is already a trade running. This is an important one to do. You may wish to open multiple trades using the same conditions, but generally we want to just have one trade at a time, and it certainly makes it easier for testing purposes. So I simply make sure there's not another trade running. Okay, so the entry conditions. The first one I said is the filter. We want to make sure the closing price here is greater than the EMA. Now we want to have the stochastic turn up. And the way I'm going to do that is get my slowed stochastic and I'm going to make it greater than my signal line. Now you would think, or you might think, that is enough but actually what we need to do is to make sure it's crossed over so we always have to check the previous period and put that as being below. I'm going to press enter Click on the cell, double click to make it go down to the cells below. As I said, I've already set up this spreadsheet, so we've got things in here that make it a little bit easier. You can see here we've got a nice capital line that, fairly unsurprisingly, is quite similar to the market. Now this is because we've only got one trade. We've got no way of closing this trade at the moment. So I need to go back into here and use this column here, which in a trade informed model is our closing criteria. So I'm going to close this trade when the stochastic has gone into the overbought area, which is, new, is normally considered to be 80. So I'm going to put that in here. I'm going to say that's overbought. And when the stochastic goes above 80, we close the trade. So again, I've got some conditions in here. And these are again checking whether to see if we have an actual trade running, because you can't close a trade if there is not one running. And also a check to see whether the trade has been, start, has been closed by any other means. Okay, so if and... We can do it fairly simply here. If and the stochastic is greater than 80, again I press F4, I copy it down. We can see instantly that we now have a capital graph that makes a little bit more sense. And we have now instead of one trade, we have 38 trades. Right, let's reverse this for our short trades. Closing price is lower than our exponential moving average. Okay, and also our percent K, our stochastic, is lower than the signal line, and the previous one was greater than. Copy that down and again I'm going to use the close here and all we're going to say is this time we're going to use the oversold and we're going to get out when the stochastic is oversold and I'm going to use the 20 level. So whenever the stochastic, always using the same row of course, is lower than the oversold level. I'm going to copy that down. Now we can see that we have both long and short trades. 
Okay, so nice and simple. There's all sorts of other variations we can add onto this. One common one, we may want to trade long only, or at least look at how the strategy would perform if it was long only. So I put in a, a little true false checkbox here. It's nice and easy to do. But the basic simple thing is we're going to use this cell here as a Boolean, true or false. So if we say long only, what we're going to do is come here. These are the criteria for our short entry. And I'm going to say that it also has to check this cell here, the F4, and make sure that it equals true. Make sure, of course, that it equals false. Right, so it's not made any difference until I click the button here. We can see that our short trades disappear. So we can very quickly check between the two strategies and decide which one we like the most. So there you have it, a quick demonstration of how to set the entry and exit criterias for a trading strategy using Excel. And if you like this video, please remember to subscribe. If you want more information about trading form backtest models or about trading the financial markets in general, please go to www.tradeinformed.com.